you know, the way the site looks. That's certainly an aspect of the web de of web design, and we talked about that. Why we're concerned about why the site looks. We want it to look good. We want it to match the mood. But more important than that, the things that we do, <coughs> as far as graphically on the page, uh, helps visually organize the site. Helps the user to get a sense of what the site is about, even uh, at a glance, at a, at a quick glance. We can look at newspapers from around the world and languages that we don't speak. And we can sort of get a sense of stuff simply by looking at the graphics. And by the graphics, I don't mean the, the, the pictures and things like that. I mean how it's laid out. Question. This may be a lab question, but I'll, if it is, you can let me know. Sure. Um, one of the sites that I had, when I pulled it up here at LCC, I mean, it was all over the place. You had an ad on one page and something else on another page, and you had to go down about four pages before you even got to any content. Okay. But when I was at, on my home PC, everything came up, and it was all on the first page. I would have to see an example to be able to respond to that. Okay, that's what happened with one of my folders too. I put everything together, all the pages and everything was there. Uh, okay. and the style sheet and everything, and the other pages were there. Okay. And then I started seeing it in the other pages. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Why? All right, here's a good example of what I'm talking about. I, I would have to see that. Sometimes, you may have even notice in Canvas, if you go to Canvas, uh, you first get a very unformatted layout, and then all of a sudden, boom, it pops into uh, the appearance. And what that is, is a matter of if the server is slow, you might not have gotten the style sheet yet. And so you get the HTML content, but you don't have the style sheet. And then when the style sheet finishes loading, then it goes into play. So it could have been something along those lines, but something like that specific. All right. I'm assuming no one in this class speaks Icelandic, right? Is that true? You do? Oh, I was going to say, that would have been, that have been amazing. <laughs> Iceland's a fascinating place, and I hope to go there next summer. Um, I'm, I'm saving up for it, and I hope nothing comes up like I need a new car or something like that. So if my car is listening, I hope you last out at least until um, fall of next year. I have almost 200,000 miles on my car. So it, it could go at any moment. I think I have like 190 some thousand, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I was assuming people don't speak Icelandic. So here's a newspaper that's in Icelandic. And we can look at this and we can probably make some conclusions about what the content looks like. No. I, I wanted to do some searching with the screen off, so I, I turned off the screen. Uh, we can tell, for example, you know, this is probably the name of the newspaper, right? Why? Well, because it's a big banner in that position. What's this stuff? Navigation. Well, you look stuff, right? Pardon me? That's the part that you go and look, see. Right, right. And this is a navigation. What's this? An ad. An ad. What is probably the most important article? Probably this one. All right. These are also important. These might be writers, right? Add, add. Subway. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where I'm going to lunch today, so. All right. Uh, weather. Little graphic. It's set off to the side. More stuff. Simon Cowell.
What are these? Would you suppose? Uh, I think just like the menu for that. Yeah, or, or the top news stories, more ads, and so on and so forth. The point is, is you can go to a lot of sites like this where you don't even know, like, the language, but visually, there's sort of a visual language that tells you um, how the site is organized, what's of importance, what's of secondary importance, what is a navigation, and so on. So in addition to simply looking good, and I would say that page it was a little busy, but other than that, that page looked pretty good, I would say. So other than making your page look good, uh, we're going to employ all these graphic techniques to help organize the site. All right. Uh, and why do we want it organized? Because again, it gets back to goals. So web design is so much more than just making a website look nice. It is surrounded with the goals of the site. It's impossible to say what are the rules for a well-designed website. We can think of guidelines, not necessarily rules, right? Um, in terms of concrete rules about it should have this appearance, it should only use this number of colors. We can say guidelines, like most of the time there should only be a handful of colors. You know, Most of the time the most important thing that you, is going to be in the biggest font. Most of the time, it's going to be organized this way. All right? it, it, it's just like we can't say what makes a good painting. Do a lot of colors make a good painting? No, there's some great paintings that only have a few colors. You know, do bright colors make a good painting? No, there's some good, great paintings with dark, muted colors, and so on. It's all about the goals of the artist and the goals of the painter and what they want to try to convey. Same thing with the web design. All right? Um, <clears throat> Even things like being clear about your purpose. Some websites deliberately make themselves confusing. All right? Why would they do that? Why would a website deliberately make itself confusing? Possibly more clicks in the, in the case of like uh, uh, clickbait, right? They may put a misleading headline or they may make things go make make you click through several things to get to the thing you know um, you know shocking news about LeBron James and you click six times and you find out he had a hangnail or something you know yes to get them to look at the entirety of the page that's very true but more so in some cases it might be entertaining if you're going to a website to buy air tickets to Iceland, you want to find what you're looking for quickly. And you want to get it and see what the prices are and make your purchase. And you don't want any confusion there. But what if I'm, what if I'm like reading a site that's like a mystery novel that I want to lose myself in, that I want to spend some time exploring? All right. There's a great example of this. There's a viral marketing site, and I don't think it still exists, but we can use the Wayback Machine to find it. If you go to archive.org, there is the... I lied. Oh, no, I didn't. Archive.org slash web. You can put in a URL, and you can actually see archived versions of it. So we can see Lorain County Community College's first web page. So we can see what it looked like in 1996. Or not. 1997, let's say. Looks like it launched October 8th of 1997. That's what the site looked like. And we can go forward a little bit to 2005, let's say. February 11th. 
and there was an error for some reason. Let's go back to February 7th. Uh, there was also an error. Okay, here we go. Here's the website. And again, it's not going to be a perfect version of the website, but here's basically what it looked like. Anyhow, that's kind of cool um, to do that if you want to do some research about what sites look like. But there was an old website, ilovebees.com. And it came up in 2004. And when we get to this site, it looks like a site about keeping bees, all right, like a beekeeper. So you're raising bees to get honey. And then all of a sudden, you get an error message like this. Wow, that looks confusing. And let's see, what do you do? We'll click one of these. I love bees. And the axons keep on coming. The operator's clock struck midnight. Now we got axons in 160 cities in 44 states. It sure doesn't sound like anything about bees, does it? hives. Looks like there's a message coming over there and so on. Some of this is a little bit uh, jumbled simply because it didn't, uh, the archiving of it, um, there were some issues uh, with it apparently. The point is that this site obviously isn't about bees. All right, what was I Love Bees about? Does anyone know? Well, you would think, right? But clearly when we went to it, it wasn't, right? So what was it about? I Love Bees is actually a viral marketing site for the video game Halo, all right? Now, what they did is they created this site and probably one of their employees posted on a gaming message board, wow, I found this site that's really weird. And it gathered attention. People visited it, and people were intrigued. Like, what is this? It's supposed to be a website about bees, but here they're talking about this and that and the other, all right? And it got people's attention. So in that case, the, the, the purpose of the site, the goals of the creator of the site were to get attention, all right? not convey information about bees, or even convey information about the game in great detail, but to get interest about their product and intrigue people. So they did that. It, it sounds crazy, but it, it worked to a big degree. So there's a write-up here if you want to read about it. Alternate reality game that served as a uh, real world experience and a viral marketing ga a game for the video game Halo 2, and so on. I Love Bees was first advertised in a hidden message in a Halo 2 trailer. People who investigated the website discovered the page appeared to be hacked by mysterious intelligence. Players solved po puzzles, audio, audio logs were posted, revealing more of the story, and so on. So the purpose of this site was to market the game and doing it by intriguing the people and not being very direct about the goals of the site, being secretive about the goals of the site and capturing their attention and capturing their imagination. Now, if you were to do a website for a law firm like this, where, hey, hey, I'm going to say I love cats and I'm going to have a web page about cats, but really it's an advertisement for Jones & Jones Law Firm. 
it would not be effective, right? But when you think of video games, when you think of the kind of people that like to play video games, they like to immerse themselves in sort of an alternate world. They like puzzles to figure out. They like to be intrigued and have their imagination captured. That was a good and effective uh, campaign. Uh, and again, it started off by them just having ilovebees.com in the background of one of their trailers. All right? Uh, advertisements for it. I don't know about you, but every time I see like a website on a, uh, a TV show, like a made up one, I, I go and look to see if it's actually a marketing site for it. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. All right? What is all this about, though, ultimately? What this is about is designing a website to satisfy goals. So I can't give any more direct uh, guidelines other than to say that. For a website to be successful, it has to satisfy the goals. It has to satisfy the goals of both the creators of the website and the users of the website. Let's think about I Love Bees. Goals of the creators of the website for that site. What were their goals? Yeah, to get people, I like the word invested. Get people invested in the game. Halo 2. What was the goal of the U? And we could go on. There probably we could specify some other goals and so on. What about um, the users of the site? What were their goals? Enjoyment. Enjoyment. Entertainment. And the only thing I would say different than that is a certain kind of enjoyment and entertainment. How would you describe that kind of entertainment? A mystery? Yeah, a mystery. Solving a mystery and so on. Now this is a really extreme example of it. I love bees. But you can see other things, right? When uh, one of my absolute favorite websites I turn the projector off a lot of times when I visit sites just in case I type wrong or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or if, or if like a site has been taken over or whatever. Subservient chicken. Let me, let me see if I can find this. Oh, I would love to find the original of this. Let's, let's try the archive site. This is also around 2004, amazingly enough. Okay, here we go. There's a chicken. You can type in a command. Jump. Chicken jumps. Run.
uh, yoga. Some yoga. Let's see if he will swear. Yeah, it sounds off. Uh, certain things, if you typed in rude things for him to do, not that I know from experience, because I'm far more mature than to try something like that. But if you typed in rude things for the chicken to do, he would walk up to the screen and go like this, like, no, 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 no. All right. Again, same idea here as this. When this was first put out, it was not put out, obviously, for Burger King. It was one of those things that was meant to get viral. And then eventually, in fact, if you look, one of the sites here is people were checking like the hoax sites to see if subservient chicken was fact check. Snopes, Burger King, is Burger King behind a subservient chicken internet promotion? So people legit didn't know where it came from. And then Snopes, yeah, of course they were. And here we go. Oh, here's other things to try. River dance, throw pillows. There's a list of things that you can do or ask him to do, and he will do it. All right, the point of all this is, is are you going to go voluntarily and say, gee, I wonder if Burger King has a new variant of chicken nuggets? Or chicken sandwiches? Well, probably not. Uh, maybe. All right. Yeah. Well. Okay. S some of us might. All right. That's why Siri is my second wife. Right. There, there, there you go. There you go. But for those of you who know, I not have that level of interest. Uh, you might go and play a game like that. Because, wow, that's fun, right? And as you're doing it, oh, yeah, hey, Burger King has a new kind of chicken strips. Come to think of it, I am getting kind of hungry, right? And then that might cause you to do that. So the point of all this is, is it's all about the goals, all right? All about the goals. The goals are the most important thing. Now, that doesn't mean to make a website where, oh, like I said before, oh, this is a newspaper, but we're going to pretend that it is a bank. Boy, that will really trick people, right? No, it isn't about that. It's the idea that if the site is meant to be entertaining, you can take more liberties with the content and do something that is entertaining, all right? And do something that might not be obvious because your visitors' goals are not about simply getting on the site, getting the information as quickly as possible, and then leaving, all right? If you are doing sort of a standard business site, then you know the goals are different. They're not, you don't go to a lawyer's site to be entertained, or to a newspaper site to be entertained, or to a restaurant site. Well, maybe you do. I, I'm contradicting myself. Um, maybe in some cases you do go because of some of the entertaining feature they have or whatever. Well, let's say a college's website. You wouldn't go there to be enthralled and fascinated and solve a mystery. You'd go there to get some specific information. The bottom line is it's all about the goals of the site. And that's where we left off last time. I spent a little bit of time longer talking about this than I had intended to, but that's okay. So, in your design document that you're going to prepare for your project, the first section of it is going to be the strategy or the goal section. And in that section, you're going to introduce sort of your topic. You're going to say what you are going to do your site about. And you're going to say who the audience is. 
And you're going to try to make your topic neither too narrow or too broad. Most people don't pick a topic that's too narrow. I guess it's possible. All right. A lot of times people try to pick a topic that's too big, though, and they have to narrow it down. I can talk to you about your topic, and I'll give you feedback when you turn in the design about whether it's too broad or too narrow. And prior to that, you can talk to me. Remember, you don't have to wait to turn this in to talk to me about it. You can send me an email about your ideas, and we can review it and make sure we're on the same page. Anyhow, the first section, you will state and give an overview of your site. You'll talk about the audience of your site. Because it's. Do you want an XTML uh, file? No, this will be this will be this just a Word document. Okay. Yeah. So you'll define the goals in this. You will define the target audience and so on. So you'll have a description of the site's topic and purpose. You'll then have three user personas. What are user personas? Well. In a way, I oversimplified thing when I started talking about what are the user's goals. All right? Because there is no one typical user that's going to be visiting your site. And we talked about this last time when we talked about a college's site. We talked about all the different kinds of people that would be visiting the site. Now, some of those, some of those kinds of people might have some goals in common. Some of them might have different goals, right? A member of the community uh, that is not a student here might be interested, for example, in information like what the library hours are, what cultural events are there on campus, how do I use a gym. Or maybe those kinds of things are less important to a student because they're interested in their classwork and, and registering for next semester and what they need to take to get their degree and so on. A community member that's not a student here isn't worried about enrolling for classes necessarily. Maybe they would be, but um, they're going to be more interested in maybe some of those other things. Um, just like an employee may be interested in, I need to find the form for requesting a sick day as opposed to registering for a class, and so on. So there's different kinds of users. There isn't just one user. And that's what a persona is. A persona is where you, you make up a person. And you tell me some characteristics about that person. And <clears throat> if you look online, you can find a lot of different sort of templates for Personas. Let's Google website personas. Examples. This describes them. And here's an example. This is a persona developed for the USDA's Economic Research Service. One of the persona is a senior manager. Here's a picture of them. Fictional name. Demographics. Goals and tasks. Environment. And they give a quote that represents them. Here's another one. Most valuable lesson I've learned in growing as a web designer is to stop designing for myself. Here's one, Brand, Brandy Taylor. This is for an online shoe store. Her profile is she has narrow feet. They have a 
quote for her. It's so difficult to buy shoes that fit my feet. Female, age 36, blah, 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 blah. Motivation, goals, and in this one, it's kind of cool because they tie their actual user customer comments to this persona, sort of showing, hey, um, I, uh, you know, I, I've also experienced this. Now, does that mean that you develop a different website for people with narrow feet? So when you come in, there's two boxes. Do you have regular feet or, nor or narrow feet? Of course not. Are we only talking about narrow feet here? No, we're talking about people that have out of the ordinary needs for shoes. For example, someone with gigantic feet, all right? Someone with a very big, tall person that might take a size 14 or 15 would sort of fit in this category of doesn't fit the standard sizes. And probably many things that, that you would say about them would also be true for the fictional person that they created. So you try to create people that are representative, not just of their own goals and needs, but for a group of people. All right? Here's the example I came up with for this. And I think I briefly showed it to you last time. Example persona. James LeBron is a father of a young man that wants to be a good basketball player. Son is in eighth grade and is on his school team. He wants to help his son improve uh, skills as he goes into high school. Played some basketball, but not an expert. That was meant to be funny. Goals. Help sir, not, uh, help. Help son learn how to shoot shots that he doesn't know how to shoot himself. Find drills to improve his son's skills. Help son learn to shoot with both hands. So this might be, for example, a website that is uh, geared towards you know, teaching people how to play basketball. All right. In this case, maybe a coach created this website. Maybe a coach does basketball clinics in the summer. Right. His goal is to get more attendance at his clinics. His goal might also be to get more jobs, to get different schools to bring them in, right? Maybe Lorraine Community College could bring them in for a clinic for their basketball players, and maybe Cuyahoga Community College could, and Lakeland, and so on. So the coach might be looking for more jobs, and the coach might be looking for to help his own players, all right? And the site is obviously not geared towards expert basketball players. It's geared towards, you know, maybe the high school player, the, the, the average high school player, or maybe even junior high players. So that would be the goals of the person that, um, that created the site. Now, the goals of the visitors of the site, you might, one of the personas might be a parent of a kid that is looking to improve their student's uh, abilities. Another might be a coach looking for a seminar to bring into their school, all right, a clinic that could run in their school to help all of theirs. Uh, another might be a player themselves who's just looking to improve things, all right. The point is, is each of these people, the creator of the site and the different personas that visit the site are going to have their own set of goals. There might be some overlap. There might be some goals that are different for each of them. But they're going to have their own goals. Creating personas allows you to think beyond sort of a blanket, what does the user think? Because there's not just a typical user. There's many typical users. There's many sorts of people that are going to be visiting your site. And you can't design a website for every human that might possibly visit your site. So you sort of break them down into groups and define typical groups and what their goals might be. That's the whole purpose of developing personas. 
So you'll create three of them. Go all out. Get pictures for them. Use famous people's pictures. Use your friends, whatever. Make up names for them. Make up a little backstory for them so that you have a sense of what, uh, what the, the people are about. And finally, come up with a prioritized list of three goals for each of the personas. All right. Now, do you do this? Do you do it just because it's part of the assignment? No. You do this to put yourself in the shoes of people that are visiting your site. All right. Depending on how big the site is and what the budget is, you could actually go out and interview some of your customers or look at feedback from your current website if you have one to help informing these personas. That's the first portion of the web, of website design, a strategy section. Should look professional, be done in Word, read like a report that will, you would give one's boss, and not just a list of things. The user personas should each be on a separate page and should contain an actual photo. Respect copyright law. So if you take a picture of LeBron James, say where you got it from. Any questions on that section? I spent a lot of time talking about this section. We spent a good amount of time last time and we spent a good amount of time today. The reason is, is you got to get off on the right foot. You got to really zero in and focus on the goals before you start thinking about any other stuff. All right? And this, I think, is against conventional wisdom of web design because most, web, most people, I think, most lay people, when they think of web design, would think of like, well, you know, how can I make nice effects when I mouse over something or what colors and fonts and all that I can use. That's certainly an aspect of web design, but that's not the primary aspect. The primary aspect is developing something that will satisfy the goals of the organization and the people visiting the site. The second part is called the scope. And this, there's a subtle difference here, and I think people have a sense about it, but sometimes people get a little confused. First of all, your goals are what the users expect to accomplish by visiting your site, or what they hope to accomplish by visiting the site. The goal should not simply be about, like, my site should have a good navigation. Of course your site should have a good navigation, all right? Unless it's sort of a mystery site that you're developing on purpose or whatever. But for most standard business websites, having good navigation, you don't even need to say that as a goal. Like any more than saying you're going to have doors to your store, right? Yeah, of course you're going to have a door to get into your store. You know, that's not really a feature that's terribly interesting. Instead, it's why people are visiting your website. And people don't visit your website to admire your navigation. They don't, get there, they don't come there to admire your ability to blend colors together or to use fonts effectively or any of those things. They go there to get something done, to satisfy a goal that they have. So that's what goals are about. Why is someone visiting my site? The scope includes requirements, and the requirements are how you're going to try to satisfy that goal. So, let's say I'm developing, I'm a, I'm a basketball coach, and I'm going to develop a website that contains tutorials for the players, and also advertises my summer clinics. All right? Definitely could be something that uh, a coach would do. So my goals are to, you know, provide info for my players, provide info about scheduling a clinic
And finally, provide info for people looking to book a clinic. We might have our three personas. We might have the parent of a player. Find drills the player can try. Find a summer clinic they can attend. We might have another coach. Find a coach to come in over summer and run a clinic and so on down the line. All right. I'm not going to write all the goals up there. I'm not going to do a project for you, but that would be examples of the goals that you would define in the strategy section. In the scope section, you're going to identify what, you, what you're going to put on the site to help achieve those goals. So, I might have a page of videos demonstrating shooting. A page of videos demonstrating team drills. Or I'm going to actually cross out the word a page of and just say videos demonstrating shooting, videos demonstrating team drills, videos demonstrating individual drills. Contact information. Price information. Feedback from coaches and players. The goals form what we want to do on the site. The requirements or the scope section are the how we're going to do it. So let's look at one of the goals. A coach might want to find another coach to come in and run a clinic for him over the summer. All right. Maybe I'm a junior high basketball coach and yeah, I played like some high school basketball, but I'm not really an expert in it and I'm doing the best I can, but I want to bring in an experienced coach to run a three-day clinic, all right, to improve my junior high basketball players, all right? So that's my goal. If we look in here, contact info for booking, that helps satisfy the goal, right? Because if I look and I say, yeah, gee, this is a good coach, I want to bring them in, that'll help satisfy my goal. Price information, yeah, that's certainly important, right? I might think, boy, this, this, this coach has a great clinic, but they're charging $10,000 and we just can't afford that, all right? So price information would be useful information in satisfying my goal. Feedback from other coaches and players. Now again, you'd have to take that with a grain of salt, right? But what if I saw the name of someone on the list that I knew? The person from the junior high uh, in a different city. And, and it said that they said that this guy put on a good clinic. I could call him up and I could confirm that it wasn't just made up or whatever. All right? So that might be useful. These things might even be useful, right? If I saw how the coach 
coached and how the coach taught players how to do things, that might help me make my decision if the coach is a good person to do a clinic for my team. The point is, is that each one of these requirements or some of these requirements might help this coach in satisfying their goal. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. There's not one requirement for each goal. Each goal may have several requirements that help satisfy those goals, that goal. All right? So one goal might have several requirements that helps satisfy that. The reverse is also true. A parent that is looking for drills for their kid and a coach that's looking for drills for their team both would benefit from these things. So one requirement may correspond to multiple goals. One goal may correspond to multiple requirements. So in the scope section, what you'll do is you will word your requirement as precisely as possible. So maybe video dis videos demonstrating shooting, maybe that's not very precise. I will have two videos demonstrating the jump shot. That's a lot more specific, right? The more specific you can make these requirements, the better they're going to be. For each requirement, indicate what goal the requirement address. The strategy section should be your lighthouse to keep you focused. When in doubt, look at your personas and look at their goals. Everything you put on your site should relate to the personas and their goals. If not, why put it on there? Right? Why would the, you know, why have a, a section of this website that talked about the basketball coach's vacation to Japan? Right? Maybe this depends if he goes in that vacation to see all the players. Okay. That, 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 that's a trick. Excellent. Thing to do. Excellent point. If it's relevant, if, for example, someone brought him to Japan to teach the Japanese national team, and he went on vacation there, then you could include that to say, look, this guy gets, you know, does seminars all around the world. They brought him in to coach the uh, Japanese national team. And oh yeah, here's a couple extra pictures to kind of prove that he was actually there, that he just didn't fictionalize this. You know, here's, here's a picture of him, you know, in Tokyo and so on. So you're absolutely right. If it's relevant to the goal, then yes, include it. If it's just there, just to be there, then why bother with it? Requirement list should be fairly detailed and fairly comprehensive. How much is enough? Each goal should be addressed by requirement. Each requirement should tie to a goal. There should be 15 to 20 fairly well-worded detailed requirements and so on down the line. All right? Don't bite off more than you can chew. It's okay to change requirements. This is a map to get you to what you hope to achieve. I may have a map to get from here to Columbus, right? But if I find there's construction on I-71, I may take a detour, right? So that doesn't mean that coming up with a map or coming up with a plan is useless, right? It's better than me saying I'm going to get my car and drive and hope I'll arrive in Columbus, right? It's better to have some kind of plan than to have no plan. And there's no need to define as a requirement the basics of a, wood a web design. Easy navigation, accessibility, those are to be assumed. If you have any doubt, you can ask me about this. All right, next time we'll wrap this up and we will start talking about once we have this information, what do we do with it? How do we go and how do we make our website to satisfy this design document that we come up with. Questions? Will um, we be covering wireframes? Yes. Um, uh, uh, like me, I'm just thinking about a little about a video game. Uh-huh. Because I get like, I don't know what to call it, like codes. Right. And real website, I mean, how would you like, I mean, I want to talk about their, their video game mode. I don't want to like, like it's still stuff 
Uh, well, keep in mind that that you know um, if you are including, I, I guess what you mean. I guess it depends what you mean by stuff. If you want to take images or videos from their site, you're welcome to do that, provided you follow copyright law, which means don't take too much and and give credit to where you got the the information from. If you do that, you should be okay. All right. If you have any questions, we can we can talk about it individually. Yes. That would be a possibility too. Include a link, like uh, I was like yeah. Exactly, and then put put a link to it. Yeah, exactly. Other questions. All right, we'll see you up in Lamb. <laughs>